Welcome back to Chat App Tutorial Series with Mern Stack. In this video, we're gonna go on and create our first Node.js server and our first API with Express.js. So I've opened VS Code over here and I'm gonna go on and open the folder where we want to start our project. And now I'm gonna go to the terminal and type npm init and press enter. Now what npm init will do, first of all, if you don't know what npm is, npm means node package manager and it comes bundled with node.js. If you haven't seen our previous video where we set up our environment, I would highly recommend you to go and watch it. So anyway, when we type npm init, we are initializing a new node.js app. So it's going to ask us the package name. I'm going to say talkative. It's going to ask the version, enter, enter, entry point. Entry point, I'm going to keep server.js instead of index.js. Test command, no, no. Keywords, no. Author, author is Piyush Agarwal. License, no. Is this okay? Yep. All right. So here we go. We have a package.json file generated over here. So what is this file? This file is going to contain all of the scripts that we're going to need to run our project and it's going to contain all of the dependencies. So for example, I'm going to go ahead and install our first dependency, which is called express. So I'm going to go ahead and type npm install express. Now what is express? Let's go to the browser and understand. So if you go on and type express, you're going to see express node.js web application framework. So express makes it really easy to develop the backend apps with node.js. So it's fast and it's unopinionated, meaning we can develop the app according to our liking. We don't have to follow a fixed set of rules to develop a web application. So here we go. Express has installed and you can see in the list of dependencies, it has updated that express package has been installed. Awesome. Let's go on and create our very first server. So for that, I'm going to create a new folder over here called backend. And we're going to keep all of our code inside of this backend folder. Now inside of it, I'm going to go on create a, and create a new file called server.js. Now inside of it, I'm going to import express. So we installed express, right? So I'm going to import express like const express equals require express just like that. And now we're going to create an instance of this express variable. So I'm going to go ahead and type const app equals express just like that. And now with the help of this app variable, we can start our own server. So now I'm going to say app dot listen, listen on which particular port on 5,000 for, for now, I'm just keeping it 5,000. You can keep it 7,000, 8,000 or whatever you like. And after this has started, I'm going to log that started on 5000 and save this. Now, how do we run this file? We need to go to the terminal and type node and then the location of this file, which is inside of the backend. So backend slash server dot JS and press enter. Now you see server started on port 5000. Congratulations. You have successfully created your very first web server. Now we don't want to write this script every time we want to run our server, right? So we're just going to go to package.json and create a custom script for it. Let's just remove this test script and I'm going to say start for the script. So I'm just going to add this inside of the start script node backend slash server.js. Let's kill this server by pressing control C. And now I'm going to type npm start and you're going to notice that it does the same thing. Yep, you see server started on port 5000. Awesome. Now let's go on and create our very first Express.js API. So below this, what I'm going to say app dot get. Now, if you don't remember what get post put delete all of these HTTP requests are, I would highly recommend you to go and watch our second video of this series where I explain all of these HTTP requests. Link will be in the description below. So I'm going to make a get request to slash route. So whenever we visit this slash route, it's going to do something. So this app.get takes another parameter, which is a callback. And this callback takes request and response. So now we're going to say, we're going to send some response, right? To the slash route. So we're going to say response dot send. And for now, we're just going to say API is running. Awesome. So 
Our port was on 5000, so let's go to this 5000 port and check if our app is working fine or not. So I'm gonna say localhost 5000. Okay, it shows cannot get. Okay, it's the reason is because every time we make changes on this file, we need to restart our server. So let's restart our server. And now let's check. Yep, you see API is running, awesome. Let's go on and create a little more complex API. So I'm just gonna go down here and say app.get and I'm gonna serve all of the data related to our chats. So I've created a dummy data over here. So you can go to github.com slash push dash eon and inside of the repositories, you can find this Mern chat app repository. You can search over here, chat, and you're gonna find this repository. Go to this repository and start the backend folder. I'll add a folder for the dummy data over here. I haven't yet added it, but I'll add it. So let me just add it for now over here. So inside of the backend, I'm gonna have this folder with the data.js. So this is just similar to the data that we're gonna have in our database. This is not the actual data. So for example, the chat's data will contain if it's a group chat or not, the list of users that are part of the chat, the ID of the chat, and then the chat name. So I have a bunch of dummy data over here. And again, I'm gonna add this file to our repository. Don't worry, you're gonna find it there. So I'm just gonna add export const chats. Cool, so I'm just exporting this data. And now over here, I'm gonna create another endpoint slash API slash chat. Now, what is this gonna do? So add a callback here, request comma response. So I'm gonna explain what this request does in just a minute. So here I'm just gonna say response dot send. So previously we're sending this string. Now we're gonna send the data, this data. So I'm just gonna say chats. So chats is imported, yep, just like this. It is imported from there and save this. Let's restart our server and check if it works or not. Okay, some error, unexpected token export. Okay, so this is not how we export things. So we have to type module dot exports and then we're gonna export chat. So now if we save this and run it again, you're gonna see our server started and let's go to the browser and say slash API slash chat. It was chat, I believe. Yep, you see over here, we have all of our chats data. Now this is an official API endpoint which we can use to display the data into our front end. But let's go on and make use of this. So let's say if I want to get a single chat data with the use of an ID. So it's gonna be the case, right? Whenever we click on a single chat, we want all of the data related to that single chat. So if we have this ID and let's say we want only this chat's data. So what are we gonna do? Let's find out. So I'm gonna go on and create another endpoint. So app.get. And this time we're gonna have slash API slash chat and we're gonna give one single API. So we're gonna give a variable over here of ID. Cool, and then we're gonna have callback as usual, request response. And now here something's interesting is gonna happen. So uh, what I'm gonna do is for now, I'm gonna say console dot log and I'm gonna say request, that's all and I'm gonna restart this server. Now notice, when we go back to the browser and say slash API slash chat slash ID, I'm gonna put this ID over here and let's press enter. Nothing's gonna happen because obviously we are not sending anything, but notice inside of the console, we have a huge request object. And inside of this object, what we need is this thing, params. Inside of the params, we have this ID variable that we have used over here, right over here. So we're gonna take this ID variable. So what I'm gonna do, request dot params dot ID. Now let's try to visit that URL once again. Yep, you see, we have this ID. Now we can make use of this ID. So let me comment it out. What I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna say const single chat and we have this data right so we're gonna find the single chat inside of this data so what i'm gonna do chats dot find 
and take the single chat. So we're gonna compare the IDs of each of the chat. So if C dot underscore ID is equal to request dot params dot ID, then what we're gonna do, we're gonna send it to our user. So response dot send single chat. Let's find out. So first let me restart the server again. Yep. And now you're gonna see, yep, we get a single chat from this particular ID. Awesome. Let's go to, let's go back and take this ID. And if I put it over here, slash ID, yep. You see, we get only this data. So this is how we create our APIs by using Express.js. Now, you see, we have this port number over here, 5000. So we don't want to make this public that our port is on 5000. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna create a .env file, which is gonna be like this .env. And inside of this, we're gonna create a variable called port, which will have value 5000. Now to make use of this variable, we're gonna install a package called .env. So I'm gonna go to the terminal and say npm install .env. And now over here, instead of 5000, I'm gonna just below, just above it, I'm gonna write const port equals process dot env dot port variable. Or if that's not available, just use 5000. Also, before using this, we, get, we are supposed to write over here, we are supposed to import this library that we just installed. So I'm gonna import dot env so const dot e n v equals require dot env and now i'm going to make use of this dot env dot config awesome now this should work let's find out okay it's server started on port and i'm going to add a custom template string template over here and i'm going to add this port variable Let's start the server again. Yep, you see server started on port 5000. It's working absolutely fine. Let me refresh. Yep, it's working fine. Now you see, we have to restart our server every time we make changes to this file, right? How do we avoid this? So we're gonna use something called nodemon. So I'm gonna kill the server and install a package called nodemon. And inside of the package.json, I'm gonna add a script Instead of node, I'm gonna say node mon backend slash server.js. And now you're gonna see when I run npm start. Yep, you see watching all of these extension and watching that particular file, if this file changes, it's gonna update the server. So if I let's say API is running successfully and save it, you're gonna see it restarted the server for us. And with this, we have successfully created our very first server and very first Express.js API. And now you might remember I installed Postman, right? In the previous video, in the environment setup video, instead of using our browser to test our APIs, we can make use of Postman. So instead of the Postman, click on this plus icon here and you can select the type of request that you're trying to send. So I'm trying to send the get request, enter the request URL. So I'm gonna type HTTP slash local host colon 5000 slash API slash chat chat and click on send button and you're going to see it provides us with all of the data. So this is very convenient when it comes to testing our APIs. I'm going to talk more about Postman as we go on and progress in this course. So for now you can go ahead and play with it and I'll see you in the next video where we're going to create our first react JS app and serve all of this data that we're sending from the back end into our front end. Click the link in the description for full playlist where I'm gonna upload every single video of this series.